Hey, if you're looking for a place that talks about OTC and penny stocks, you found it on top and hot. I'm John Zadara, the host, and this is Monday, September 19th. Now we look at OTC and penny stocks because that's what I trade. I'm a day trader and I see a lot of things going on every day. I accumulate a nice pile of interesting stocks, sort through them, and then I share a few of them with you. Now just to keep the record clear here, I am not compensated or paid by any company to talk about these stocks. This is strictly my opinion, my due diligence that I'm sharing with you, nothing more. And in saying that, let my due diligence be the beginning of your due diligence. Don't go buying something because I see something in it. Buy it because you see something in it. Now, I said we look at OTC and penny stocks. Penny stocks can be on any market, not just the OTC. As long as they're under $5, they're considered a penny stock. And you're going to find those on every single market. And I love trading the major market penny stocks. First off, they're free. There's no transaction fees, folks. That's a big deal. Cost me $14 for every trade round trip on the OTC. Second of all, you're playing with the big money up there. People got money to spend. Things can run up there just like they run downstairs at the OTC. Take my word for it. Now, I am over here right now at the otcmarkets.com website. This is where I do 99.9% .9 of all of my research on OTC stocks. This otcmarkets.com, it's their business. This isn't just a site accumulating information and putting it out there for our convenience. No, this site was devised for OTC investors. The SEC and FINRA update this site and this site alone every single day for every single OTC stock. So if you're looking for information, start here. You'll save yourself a lot of time. And if you don't find what you're looking for, then you can go out to the big internet and search through everything they've got and see if you can find it. But really, start here. You'll thank me later. Now, let's see what we did today. I do believe those are fresh numbers, folks, and they're not looking good at all. I'm going to refresh this page. We're looking at these numbers up here. Oh, thank God we got a little bit more. All right, our dollar volume, $1.6 billion. As I said maybe a week ago, this appears to be our new average. Our old average used to be $2.1 billion a day. We haven't hit that in maybe two weeks now. Share volume, for bloody hell's sake, we can't stay over $10 billion. I think we were at $11 billion on Thursday. Now we're back down to $7.4. And our trades, what do I tell you in every single video? $250,000. So we're not going anywhere. We're not doing any real work on the OTC market, but there's still lots of stocks popping. There's lots of money to be made out there, and I've got a handful of them here I want to share with you now. So come on, I won't let you down. So our first sweet stock pick of the day is Barry. Get it? <laughs> this is ticker B-E-R-I, Blue Earth Resources. Now Barry had some big news come out today, had an impact boom really caught the attention of the investors matter of fact if we take a look at one of my most favorite pages here at the OTC market it is the current market page and you can choose between the biggest losers or the biggest gainers of course I'm looking at the gainers Now, the reason I like this page so much is because they give me one column of information I can't find anywhere else online and to me it's as valuable as gold trades right there I can see how many trades the company has had today up until the time I look at it. Right now it's the end of the day, so it's going to be a total tally. Now this is a list of all the gainers on the entire OTC with the absolute biggest of all 12,000 plus stocks at the top. And it starts to get smaller as you scroll down. Now the reason I consider trades so important is because I equate it to people. If I see a stock, let's find one here, right here. This one's got 284% gains. And now let's say I'm over at my charts and I'm doing a scan. And I see this stock running, boom, boom, boom. And it's like, holy cow. And I see the volume is starting to pick up. I'm getting interested in it. Well, I'll run over here to see how many trades it's got. Then I see it's only got three trades. It's like, what? No, three people is the maximum that can be trading that stock. And I'm not going to get a lot of price action with only three people trading it. So I'm looking for big numbers. I'm looking for at least double digits like 60 and 98. That catches my attention. It's caught other people's attention, obviously. Obviously, triple digits is even better. 435, 122, 470. Yes, look at Barry today. Barry did 762 trades. Now, folks, I can guarantee you, guarantee you without a doubt, that is more than three people trading that stock today. Right? 
And I could say it's possible there could be absolutely 762 people trading it. It is possible. But without a doubt, it does mean there are probably a few hundred people trading this stock. And that is enough to find price action that can put money in your pocket. So what did Barry finish at today? Uh, just under 12 and a half cents with almost 50% gains. She's on the pink tier, she's current, and she's got those ever precious green ticks I tell you in every video to look for, especially with the pink. This is validated information you're getting from the OTC markets behind the scene. Consider it a bonus with the pink. So this looks good. So what does Barry do? Well, to put it in simplest terms, they are a reseller of fuel. They go to refineries and at a wholesale cost, they buy gas and diesel and who knows what else. And then they resell it, retail, and make a profit. Now, it doesn't sound like they do very much with that, but they are. They're doing very well. But the news that came out today, wow, talk about increasing your revenues. That's what was big. So what was the relative volume around this company today? She normally, oh goodness, what a jump. She normally does just over 18,000 shares a day, which isn't anything really. Today, she did over 2.8 million. That is somewhere in the neighborhood of 150 times her normal volume. So she was getting a lot of attention today. Share structure. Hey, you're going to like this. We have a legitimate low float, just under 10 million. And it doesn't matter if you go to the float to get that number or the unrestricted shares, which is where I always get mine. Today, both numbers are in agreement. It's a great float, 10 million. Now, this is where I became impressed with this company. You look down here and you see their annual revenues. At the end of 2021, they did $2.6 million. Now, we know that's millions because they tell us to put three zeros behind all the numbers down here. But look at the end of 2022. February was the end of their annual year. Over 10 times the revenue, $28.6 million. Their revenues are increasing very quickly. Now, they're not making very much. This is what they ended up keeping, just over or just under a quarter million dollars. But you got to remember, they're buying gas, they're buying diesel, and then they're reselling it. So they're just getting something off the top, just a little bit of cream. But the fact of the matter is, they've jumped over a thousand percent in the last year. Disclosures, we got anything new here. I'm always looking for like an 8K. You get a lot of great information from 8Ks, reverse mergers, acquisitions, reverse stock splits, forward stock splits. It's the important stuff. Uh, no, we got nothing here since 2005 and their financials are all caught up. So let's jump on over to the news. So if you scan down through their news, you can see they've been real busy. They're making lots of deals. You've got one back here for the Gulf of Oil, one here just last May with BP Amico, and then the news that came out today. They weren't deals, they were acquisitions with an S. They got two companies today. This news did come out today, September 19th. Blue Earth Resources today announces the acquisition, 100% interest in Fuel Trader Supply. We'll call that FTS. This is a Florida company, but they also bought their affiliate company, Fuel Trader Resource Management, which is a Puerto Rican company. And both of these companies have their own revenues, and one of them is really huge. FTS is a leading supplier of bulk gasoline and diesel products within the Colonial and Plantation Pipeline systems. FTS has long-standing supply relationships that allow best execution pricing by sourcing and comparing prices from any major U.S. refiner or trading house. And get this, FTS reported earnings last year of $142 million. Folks, that's five times as much as they're making. They did, what, $26 million last year. And this company did $142 million. And this is their company now. The other company, FTRM, they offer full-service bulk fuel inventory management solutions to include consulting services for sourcing, logistics, and risk management needs of clients in the petroleum industry. And they reported earnings last year of just over a million. No, not as big as the other one by any means, but it is a company that's already making money and has room to grow. So between the two, you got $143 million on top of what the company just did, $26 million. They're growing at a fast clip, wouldn't you say? 
They tell us down here that integrating the companies will allow us to take advantage of the inefficiencies in the supply ecosystem and capture additional margin from end to end. I'm excited to work more intimately with the team of Barry as we have a long-standing relationship that spans back over decades. So they're no strangers to each other. One more piece of news out of this news press. In connection with the acquisition, Barry has a firm written commitment with E.F. Hutton, a division of Benchmark Investments LLC to act as lead underwriter, deal manager, and investment banker. And that is what had this company running today. Let's go take a look at that chart. Yeah, that's Barry, ticker B-E-R-I. We are looking at this on my free trading platform, Thinkorswim. If you like it, go on over to TD Ameritrade, sign up for their free trading account, keep your account open, that's all you gotta do, and you get a Thinkorswim to use anytime you want, absolutely free. So this is a six month, four hour view of BERI. We got a real strong run here of almost 300%. Started down here near 20 cents and went to 60 cents. And I haven't got a clue why it ran. I tried to figure it out. I went to see if there was any news that correlated to the dates of March 3rd and 4th. Nah, we had one on March 10th, but I highly doubt this ran in anticipation of future news. And since then, she really has just been falling all the way down here to just over seven cents about a week ago. And today, we're just over 12 cents with a lot of extra volume. There's nothing like that beforehand. She has crushed all of the SMA. She broke through the 200, finally, and has fallen back to the 50, but is on top of the 50. That is a strong position. Our technicals, our PPO, and our MACD look great. They're both working their way up, and our crossover is about to happen here. Now, the PPO is percentage price oscillator. It works with a percentage of the price, where the MACD works with the full price. So they're similar, but there's enough differences to have them both. And our RSI is falling because, well, the price fell. And that's what the RSI shows, price rise and price fall. How about our 20-day, one-hour view? What's that looking like? 19 bad days and one good day. She was under the 50 back here 19 days ago, and she was under every single SMA just before today. Then she got on top of the 10-day SMA. And for the record, folks, that is not a 10-day SMA. I just call it that. It's actually nine days, and it's not even a simple moving average. It's an exponential moving average, which shows even more movement on the market. So this is a nine-day EMA that I call a 10-day SMA. Sorry, but now you know. So she finally got on top of that, and this morning, once the bell rang, she took off. She went from about eight and a half cents to just over 27 cents, roughly 350% gains. Woo! And she did it fast, and she threw away most of it all the rest of the day. Technicals look like we're in the middle of a pullback right now. Five minute, five day view. Nothing going on the days before today. We had some rise early in the morning, and then she took off in uh, 10 minutes. She hit her high. She was at 27.4 cents at 20 to 10 and started to fall from that point. Struggled to stay on the 50, couldn't hold it, and she has gone down lower. And we can see that is definitely less than 50% of the rise. Going from the bottom to the top, you want to see it stay above the middle or way below that. Now, I got to wonder, the company just increased, they did, they just increased their revenues from 26 million to what, 170 million? What's that worth? What is that worth? She was down here at seven cents before the day started. She's now gone up a nickel. Is that what it's worth? Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But I get the feeling people may take a second look at this after she had one run and came down. Now, she has fallen under that 50% mark, half of what she threw on the table. Normally, she can really come down low, so I would not be surprised to see that come down to that line again. It very well could, which would be an opportune time to probably get yourself a hold on this because I think with $170 million potential revenues now, and that's just what they did last year, could be $200 million by the end of this year between all three companies. I think it's worth a good watch. B-E-R-I. Put it on your watch list. Even watch it for the next couple of days. I'm not sure what's going to happen, but they did just get a lot more money. We are now taking a look at VNTH, Nanomobile Healthcare. 
Now, she didn't have any catalyst today, no news presses, no filings. Matter of fact, her last filing came out on the 16th, and she ran yesterday. Today, she just went sideways. So, <laughs> what are we looking at a stock for that's a day late, literally? Well, because that filing was just the beginning of what's going to happen. I'm just going to jump over there immediately right now. Basically, this is telling us that there was a change of control. They sold a controlling block of preferred stock, and this guy now is in charge. His name is Mr. Adam Martrusky, and he is into EV charging stations. And that's what he wants to turn this company into, an EV charging station company. So that is what they're planning on doing, but at this very moment, they're doing nothing. All we have is a new owner who has a dream to do something new with this company. So it ran yesterday, it leveled off today, as you'll see in the charts, and I think we should be watching this stock for the next bounce, the next news press that's going to make it bounce. So what was the relative volume around her today? Wow, she does a lot of shares on a daily basis, doesn't she? Almost 60 million shares every day as an empty shell. I mean, she hasn't really been making any money doing any business. And today, whoa, almost a half a billion shares. That's a lot of shares, folks. People are definitely looking at this company. Oh, talking about a lot of shares, <laughs> we got a huge float, 2.9 billion. Nothing to get really excited about. Financials for the company are zip. No matter where you look, they're not making a penny or a dollar. Nada. Disclosures, well, we already looked at them. And there really is no news to come to. 2016 is the most current news we have. So that 8K I showed you about change of operation and change of control is what everything is about. And that is just the beginning. Let's go take a look at that chart. So we are looking at a six month for our review for VNTH. Six months ago, we had a high bubble of 0045 and then virtually a thousand percent drop to this low bubble of 0005. Had a huge fall back here, not sure why, but she's been going virtually sideways all this time. 200 finally got close, it took a stab at getting on top of it, did not succeed. Back underneath until yesterday, where she took off with the news or the filing. Our technicals are real strong. Everything is pointing up except our RSI, which has had a pullback. 20 day, one hour view. Whew, look how flat this is. I mean, she's right under the 200, doing absolutely nothing. I mean, she barely had to move to hit a new low bubble here. But yesterday, she took off from 0007 up to 27. Whoa. So you're looking at another 350% jump yesterday, and then she fell really fast and hard. Now I've got my surge lines here. This is where the surge started at the bottom. That's where the surge ended, and I split it in the middle. And you can see she is sitting right on top of it right now. She hasn't given up any more than 50%. Our technicals do look as though they're ready to fall. So this is a critical point right here. We've got to watch this. Looking at our five day, five minute. So she had a nice run yesterday. She hit that high, came down hard, and today she's just been going sideways. But look where she's going sideways at, right on our halfway point, our 50% of the surge. She is bouncing on it, but not going underneath it. So to me, it looks strong. I consider it weak if it goes under. Now when I say under, I don't mean underneath. I mean down here. If it's still hanging on to it like a monkey on bars or something, that's okay. As long as it's near on that line. So right now, it actually looks good. We've got our 200-day haul coming into the picture and our 200-day SMA finally coming into the picture. Our technicals, uh, they're not looking great, folks. It would look like she's going to test this and try to break down. And if it does, I would not be surprised to see it go to the strongest SMA on the board right down here. That's what a lot of these stocks do. When a new SMA appears on the board, they go touch it out of curiosity or homage. I'm not sure what it is. So I would not be surprised to see the price fall down to the 200 SMA, wherever it is at that point in time, and most likely bounce off because we got a lot of speculation to play with here. We have very little facts. All we know is a new man in charge and he has a new idea with EB charging stations. So I think VNTH is worth putting on your watch list and watching. 
because when it pops, it's going to pop quick. And we haven't had any news since what, 2016? And that's what we need is a news press. So put this on your news press watch list as well. You want to see the news before you see the chart running. That's how you're going to make your money. I'm willing to bet most of you are familiar with this ticker. This is TXTM, Protex Mobility. This is a specialty extraction company that has a patented technology for extracting CBD and THC oil out of cannabis. But that's probably not what you remember them for. You remember the big reverse merger with that South African cannabis company, RSA MMD, on June 13th. It was a big deal. Now, this company works out of South Africa, but they just don't have the permission of the country. They have the support of the country. And they just had a piece of news come out on the 7th that really shows us how much support from the country they're getting. Now, RSA MMD is doing stuff. They've got a 10,000 square foot greenhouse down there. They've got a farm that they just harvested a bunch of hemp. They're trying to buy more property, but right now they haven't made any money. The company's got a business, you know, Protext is doing something, RSA MMD is doing something, but there are no revenues. So why it doesn't say shell risk here, I'm not real sure. But there's a lot going on right now and the company needs to be watched. So what was the relative volume around the news that I'm going to share with you? Well, she's normally doing 92 million shares a day. That's not too bad at all. Today she did about 50% more, 154 million. Share structure, what are we looking at? A mountain of shares, 7.7 .7 billion shares. Too many for me, though I would still get into TXDM. Financials, as I said, they're not making any money, not annually or quarterly. They just have nothing coming in right now. And I find this surprising. I come over here looking for 8Ks. I like to see if there's anything new going on with uh, agreements, mergers, acquisitions. Well, they just did a reverse merger in June. Why isn't that up here? Why isn't there an 8K here for that reverse merger? I do not know. They've got nothing here since 2017. And I am having a hard time trying to figure out which financial it is they're late here unless this last quarterly report just wasn't accepted. It was just rejected and they got to do it again. I really don't know because I see 630, 330, 1230. I see the last nine months covered here, so I'm really not sure. Maybe we're just waiting for it to be approved and it's going to get fixed here real short. Not sure about that either. All I know is right now they're pink limited and nothing looks like it's missing. All right, what do we have for news over here? Well, this is the news I really want to show you. Right here, we're just going to jump into it. It's a long title. <laughs> RSAMMD Acquisitions and Protex Mobility are pleased to announce its chairman, Dr. Ahmed Jamaluddin, has received the honor of being appointed as Hemp Production Ambassador for the government. Check that out. They tell us here the company is pleased to announce that its chairman has received the honor of being appointed as the Hemp Production Ambassador. It is with great honor to be appointed Hemp Production Ambassador. As ambassador, one of my roles is to promote with full autonomy and be fully enabled to build the district into a cannabis hemp hub. It was highlighted that there were numerous projects set to roll out to boost the local economy, experts, and increase job opportunities. One of those projects include hemp cannabis production under a memorandum of understanding signed with a local hemp farmer. Well, guess what? That local hemp farmer is us. That's what the company's basically saying. We're going to be used as the pilot company under our own stewardship. You like that? The pilot will become a model that is duplicatable, replicable, equitable, exportable, and an example to show what other provinces and districts could strive for in using cannabis hemp farming for community uplift. While hemp and cannabis flower have many positive medicinal uses, the other parts of the plant have many industrial uses. We believe factories in our district, our country, and globally have the opportunity to introduce hemp into their existing product lines. We haven't even begun to scratch the surface of all the opportunities. This appointment as Hemp Production Ambassador, along with the recent appointment as the National Commodity Chairperson of the largest agricultural union, 
Protex will see great benefit that the enablement of these appointments represent for their president and chairman, as government and union collaboration are essentially now wrapped up all in one corporate enablement. Folks, what this company isn't just doing is working with flour. They're not just talking about edibles, smoking it, uh, drinking it. They're getting into the hemp. And this is where we've been falling behind in America. I know the whole world has fallen behind. If some country can get on the bandwagon with hemp, they're going to get rich. You can make plastics that break down in just a few years out of hemp. You can make sunglasses. You can make paper. You don't have to cut down trees to make paper. You can grow hemp. And hemp grows three to four times a year. I mean, you only need three months to grow a full harvest of hemp. Three months. You can get 30 barrels of fuel from every acre of hemp. There is just so many things that hemp can do, you would not believe it. And there's lots of money to be made for whoever starts getting back into it. Did you know, most people didn't know this, but Henry Ford in 1941 created a car that was made out of hemp fiber. So strong was it that he took a full-size pickaxe. There's a movie of it. You can see it. He hits the car four or five times with the pickaxe, and it doesn't even leave a mark. Doesn't even leave a mark. Plus, he drove up in the car with hemp fuel instead of gas. It was right after this that hemp and cannabis became illegal in the country because the steel industry and the oil industry did not want to compete with cheap hemp and it's taken a long time to get back here so hopefully somebody's going to pick up the ball in these areas and start getting hemp products out there because we can grow hemp super cheap really fast let's go take a look at the chart for this company yep that is a six month four hour chart for txtm she was doing a whole lot of nothing for quite a while until they announced that reverse merger on june 13th and then she went crazy she went from double zero one nine up to two cents. That is over a thousand percent gains in just a few days. Obviously, we looked at it a little late here. We caught this surge from the bottom to the top, drew our 50% mark in there, and hoped that when it fell, it stayed above the halfway point, which it didn't. Fell all the way down here to the 50, even broke that. Bounced up, tried to hang on to the 50% mark, couldn't do it, fell down to the 200. Another bounce with no success to even touch our halfway point came even lower, darn near right back down to where this all started from. But the good news is, the last 20 days roughly, she has been on a steady incline. She has been rising every single day. And our technicals are hot, folks. All of them are pointing up. Let's take a look at our one hour chart, 20 days. So there you go, 17 days of climbing. She had one day of real strong push to break the 200 and then just walked across the border like it was no big deal. And today, she finished on a high bubble and had a little bit of aftermarket to push up as well. Everything looks good. SMAs are all going the right direction. Technicals are screaming red hot on the hourly. Five day, five minute. Everything looks really sweet here. We see she tapped the 200-day SMA here, was floating above it, hit it again, started arguing with it here. Looked like she was about ready to lose the battle and then took off. Had a nice run right from the beginning of the day at 006. Got up to 007. At the end of the day, hit 008. Had a pullback off of that high bubble. That's anticipated. And she is right down there off of the pullback. I don't consider that a fall, it's just a pullback. Our technicals, everything is pointing up right now. We did have that pullback on the RSI. I think this has got more to give because they're just getting started. And come on now, you've got the president chairman of this company as the hemp ambassador for South Africa. It's a corporate connection to the government. This is almost like guaranteed success. First mover advantage in every market. Everybody's going to copy them. I think TXTM is going to blow up at some point. And right now, at double zero prices, I think it's a great entry price. I'm not saying buy everything. I'm saying enter it. Get into it while it's in its double zeros. Get yourself a small chunk, maybe 25% of what you want, maybe 30 or 40%. It's cheap. And we know where this company's most likely going to go with government backing, right? TXTM, folks. I think it's going to be a moneymaker. I think it's going to be, oh, 
where it's going to be way over 10 times. Absolutely over 10 times. Do I think this is going to go to 8 cents? Yeah, I think it's going to go to 8 cents. In a short time period, I think they put out the right news presses, the right filing. I absolutely think so. And now is the time I would consider at least getting my entry position. Now, there's a lot of stocks out there moving, but those are three stocks I think we should be watching. Barry, they just made two acquisitions and have increased their revenues from 26 million to virtually 170 million. And it just moved that much today. Then you have VNTH. That's new ownership. That's a new operation. They're going to be going into electric charging stations. And nothing has even started yet. They just told us. So keep your eye on that one. And then, of course, TXTM. 008 it's at right now. I think it's actually 007. And I expect this company to do 1,000% gains within the next six months, three months, two months, folks. It all depends on what news they put out. And now that the company is attached to the government with an ambassadorship, Come on, can they really fail? I like TXTM. Lots to know out there, folks. Just do a little bit of DD and it's amazing what you can find. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.